No Twins game today, but Joe Ryan has been tinkering with his pitch mix. Dave got a pitch in his email that we're going to talk about and probably poke fun at. And so much more. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Again, and welcome back to Locked on Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And joining me for more of this nonsense is Mr. Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the tweets. Dave, I got you laughing by pretty much screwing up our cold open like three straight times. So now we're good and loose. We've got the uh, the vibes going because it can't get much worse than my first three attempts. As Homer Simpson would say, it's funny because it's not me. (laughs) Well, I I definitely can appreciate that bit of levity. Thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free. And wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us also on YouTube. We've been doing the premieres at 11 p.m. That way they're available for you if you are a night owl or an early bird. And so that's been going well. We'll see how it happens with games being played here in the regular season, which is Not that far away, but uh, for now, I think we're rolling pretty good. If you want to be part of the discussion, you can talk to us while the show is live or in the comments on YouTube or Twitter or, you know, there's a lot of options to interact with the show and we would absolutely love to hear you. Also, we're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more New customers join today and you'll get 150 bucks in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Dave, no Twins game this afternoon to break down, but I was kind of, you know, I do my prep and I get kind of a vibe for, you know, the rest of the league and if some moves were made that may have involved former twins like Chase Petty getting sent back to minor league camp, Dakota Chalmers getting sent back to minor league camp, you know, things that people may or may not care about. But I also saw a game in progress. And if people don't know, we're recording at night again, as I've night recording. Yep. It's not quite night court. It's night recording. Um, (laughs) No, not good. Uh, But anyway, the Cubs and Reds are playing and you and I had mentioned this in an off air discussion, but there's something so aesthetically pleasing and, and maybe it's because of rarity. Maybe it's because of something else or combination of the two. But to me, spring training night games just feel so satisfying to watch. Yeah, it feels more like an event. Now, I, I do like the uh, the vibe and uh, the aesthetic from day spring training games, but it does also feel uh, like it, it's uh, maybe a, a little too relaxed or too, you know, individuals working on their things. It's not very much like a, it's about as far away from uh, like a regular looking like a regular season baseball game as you can do while still having a baseball game and uh, night games are a little different. It just seems like there's um, an urgency about them. And uh, well, we're going to, we're, we're at night, we're going at night. So we're going to put on a good show. It's like, uh, you know, a matinee at the movies versus uh, opening night at the movies or something like that. So uh, my analogy is uh, not a hundred percent, but I agree. I think it's just, it's, it's a sign that we're closer to the real thing. It's going to be funny when that game ends in a tie. So it'll be the aesthetics of a regular season game with a tie, which, uh, yikes. Um, We do have a lot to get to today, but I do want to lead off with a note that we had missed, which is Eddie Rosario landing with the Nationals split contract for $4 million. I assume split contract means he can go to the minors, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, there's a different pay structure if that happens. But... Um, I can't I'm, imagine Eddie Rosario not making the Nationals. Well, the, their outfield is going to be Joey Gallo, Eddie Rosario, and like Victor Robles, and and then they've got Manessas and uh, Lane Thomas. And Lane Thomas sounds more like a Supreme Court justice than like a really good outfielder. But it does. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But am I am I understanding the split contract correctly? 
Oh, no questions at this time, please. No, actually, I don't know. I, I, that is not a phrase in baseball that I'm really familiar with. I've heard of this, uh, like a two way contract in the NBA, and I, I don't know what that is either. So, uh, you know, the emperor has no clothes as far as this question goes. I don't know. Okay. So it calls for a player to earn different salaries in the major and minor leagues. So, prorated portion of the major league salary for any time spent on the major league roster. So I don't know if that means he, so let's see here. Well, it Maybe. sounds like it gives him, um, you know, as if he doesn't have incentive, incentive to make the team so he can maximize his time. It's uh, it's uh, at this point, um, as we get down to pretty soon to opening day, um, you know, some players who've, made a lot of money in their lives and their careers have to wonder, well, am I going to get an offer that's worth uh, the effort that I'm going to be putting into, you know, it's uh, it, it, it kind of becomes a reverse thing where, you know, if somebody's made $50 million in their career, right. you know, do they want to put themselves through trying to make the Washington nationals. And, you know, Eddie Rosario goes from like, you know, the Atlanta Braves, I just want to win to uh, the nationals. I just want to be employed. So it's, just kind of a, a little bit of a different mindset for him right now. And I mean, I think we can all agree it's play well and play somewhere else, hopefully with a lot of the guys suppose, that they've yes. gone after Nick Senzel and a few of the post hype sleeper types. Uh, MLB actually has this. So I'm going to read it. Players who are on a minor league or split contract are not fully guaranteed their salaries. Uh, prorated portion. They can also um, contracts become guaranteed upon the player making the MLB roster out of spring training but he may also be cut prior to opening day. If you're cut before or on the 16th day of spring training, you're owed 30 days termination pay based on your prorated agreed upon salary. 16th to the end is 45 days termination pay. So with the 2022 to 2026 CBA, it's a lot like how I think arbitration contracts used to work where you yeah. were guaranteed termination pay uh, based on again, like the the amount of time you stay with the team in spring training, and so that went away. But this, in its place, is a, a similar resolution. Now, with that said, yeah, I think Eddie Rosario. This was basically got to get a job, and he's the kind of guy where he could really take off for like two, three months. And I think this would be a guy that the Nationals would not be like, we're holding till the deadline. If somebody needs. Eddie Rosario in June, May, like uh, let's just say a, a good corner outfielder gets hurt on a team that's contending. I don't want to put names out there because we don't want that bad juju out there, but that would be a pretty good opportunity to, you know, turn a, turn a bit of a profit on Rosario, get a, you know, a B plus prospect or maybe a, a lottery ticket prospect who you might be interested in someone at like 12th or 15th in a decent farm system on the rankings. Um, so yeah, I get it, but at the same time too, uh, it's just kind of a weird fit. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know the entire depth issue. I mean, you, you kind of ran through some of the guys who are in the outfield for, um, for the nationals and, you know, some of those names are coming off decent seasons like Thomas and other people are like Joey. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's hard to say, but once you, I, I think this is something that, uh, maybe I can't back up with uh, hard data, but it always seems like when you get a guy like Eddie, who um, has been with a team when they won the world series, that's almost like a magical uh, quality or something on the resume. It's like, he, he can always say, well, you know, I know how to win because I was there when, and he played well, famously so for uh, the Braves when they won the world series. So uh, that's uh, always a, a good thing to have uh, in your corner even when, you know, you're signing these split contracts and it's March until you have a job. It hasn't been that long since Eddie Rosario helped the team win the World Series. So he's got that going for him. And as long as he can put up decent numbers, he's going to be of interest to teams that are contending. Yeah, he's the kind of guy, as we saw in that World Series, that can go on a heater. And basically, I thought, like, he could have been the modern-day Kirby Puckett. Like, crazy bat-to-ball skills, but no play discipline. But just incredible production when you kind of consider that they swing at everything. But, you know, the, the path to becoming Kirby Puckett is a narrow one. Um, 
Let's take a quick second. We'll talk about our friends at Factor Meals. Give them some love when we come back. We'll talk about the tinkering Joe Ryan. We're all, well, I don't know if I should say we all are, but I'm always trying to eat better with, uh, you know, tr I've tried different things. You know, I've done keto, I've done uh, South Beach for a while. And the easiest way that I can imagine, though, is Factor Meals, uh, one of our tremendous sponsors. They have delicious, ready to eat meals. They're fresh, never frozen, chef crafted, dietitian approved, and ready to go in just two minutes. Like, I don't know how much more you could put on a list of things that are going to be right up your alley, even if you're super busy and trying to eat well. You can't be like Gabe Kapler and pull the uh, skin off 40 chicken nuggets and eat the just the middle pieces like some kind of uh, madman. But with Factor Meals, you'll have over 35 different options to choose from. Again, Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Keto. And there are 60 plus add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. You feel good. It's easier to stay on these things. It's a, it's a no-brainer. What are you what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50. And again, that's code locked on MLB50, which will give you 50% off. That's locked on MLB50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB50 to get 50% off. Do you know that that Gabe Kapler story? Uh, not well enough to tell it. So when he was in the minor leagues, I think he was saying he would go to McDonald's and he's obviously, you know, if you've seen one picture of him in his underwear, you've seen them all. Uh, but he's... Like he's still to this day crazy buff in like his fifties, and he would go to McDonald's and order forty chicken nuggets, peel off the outer, and eat the middle. Isn't that where the flavor is though? The middle, the outer. Well, so it's uh, I don't want to call it serial killer behavior because I have a lot of respect for Kapler. You know, he's been very good to me, but um, I actually recreated this experiment and. It made the, I think it was the McCovey Chronicles or whatever the SB Nation blog is. Yeah. Where Grant, Grant Bris, Brisby used to write. Um, but yeah, so I made that. Everyone was kind of like, wow, he's he's going for it. And I finished it. Um, and then I felt like I was going to die for like two <laughs> hours. Like I took a shower. And I swear I could feel my blood pressure rising. It had to be 200 over 100 by the time I was done. So Probably not going to have a repeat of that, but that's the Gabe Kapler challenge. Nobody is here to hear about that, though. Dave, you wanted to talk about Joe Ryan tinkering with his repertoire. What, to me, is maybe the most interesting thing about it is that he is tinkering with a sinker. And, you know, the, the, the sinker is not as popular, I think, now as it was back in the sinker slider days of, like, Scott Erickson or a, a higher level Kevin Brown. But Joe Ryan's career ground ball rate is 29.6%. And for people not really aware, I usually cite the average at about 45%. It'll ebb and flow based on the, the way baseball works in any given year. But if Joe Ryan gave up like he did, 1.78 uh, homers per nine, his career rate is 1.5, a pretty easy way to mitigate that is to put the ball on the ground more and if you've got Correa and you've got Royce Lewis, who should be pretty good at third, Carlos Santana is going to be good at first, and Julian's getting better. I don't know. I think I see a path to where this makes some sense. Yeah, and he has um, a sinker in his history. It's not uh, an entirely new pitch. He's just kind of revisiting it, uh, going over it again. And I think you're right. It is something to uh, minimize, mitigate, mitigate the uh the home run ball which to to which he's uh, been a little bit vulnerable now he is he does throw a four seam fastball and, and probably throws that more than any other pitch by a significant margin so i'm not sure one thing i i'm not you know i'm i'm not quite uh eno saris necessarily uh, or you know, or a pitching ninja with things like this but i wonder if there's an issue sometimes when if you throw a four seamer a lot, is it more difficult to throw a two seamer? Is it, you know, is there 
uh, a reason why more people don't do that, I don't, I don't know. So, but uh, a sinker does, you know, what, what it sounds like. And I think that is, you know, a little tinkering on Joe uh, Ryan's part is going to go a long way toward um, making him a much more efficient pitcher and uh, someone who's less vulnerable to the long ball. You know, yeah. you'd think a, a sinker would be more popular these days uh, with people trying to hit the ball in the air more. So, uh, and the key for him is going to be, like you said, the defense. And the Twins are set up pretty well on that side of the infield, especially with Correa at short. Yeah, and he's also been working on uh, – I know I saw he was that drive line for breaking ball stuff. Or not for breaking ball stuff, but in addition to the sinker, he's been working on breaking ball. And, uh, you know, the Twins have had some pretty good success stories from there. Um, I know Jake Odorizzi went to something called, like, the Arm Farm a while back, which was, like, the pre precursor, I think, to drive line becoming a big deal. But, um, yeah, I'm eager to see – what'll happen because he's a good pitcher with just his fastball working. If he can get, um, you know, get a, a, something he can spin a little better. That's something to think about. I think to your point though, about a uh, four seam and two seam and throwing both, uh, you have to find a way to keep them out of the same slot so that it's not just blatantly obvious what's coming. And again, that's, that's true of any pitch a pitcher is adding. Like you can't just drop down sidearm every time you throw a slider and hope they don't pick up on it. That's right. the name of the game. But I don't know enough about the execution of those pitches to see if there's a common thread. I also had an interesting conversation back in the day with Kyle Gibson, and I hadn't really thought about it, but you want the action on your changeup to mirror the action on your preferred fastball. And like I, as soon as he told me that, I was like, "Why did I not think of that sooner?" And this was yeah. like eight years ago. Like this is not a a recent thing for me. I, I I don't mean to be like, "Oh, I just learned something that maybe people have known for years." But um, that to me was fascinating. Was like, okay, if you uh, if you throw a say, uh, change up, you want that action to be mirror your fastball. And again, maybe that is super duper obvious to everybody but me. But that definitely gave me like that wrinkled my brain feeling when he told me yeah that. well this uh the the concept of pitch tunneling uh came up a few years or was popularized or it became you know kind of more of a thing that people knew about a few years ago and that's sort of where you repeat the yeah. same um delivery over and over again to uh, kind of build in some deception so yeah, yeah and it's uh you know a change up is to well you know it's kind of like a uh, it's not like a split finger fastball, but in a way it, it sort of is. It's uh, you want it to look like one thing coming in and then kind of die at the end. So, um, and one way you can do that is, uh, is to deceive with similar body movements. So it doesn't, uh, the, the hitter doesn't realize what's coming until it's like too late to do anything about it. So um, it is, you know, it's, it's a fine thing. And, and the article also, on MLB.com that I read about this. Uh, you know, Ryan is always uh, tinkering with a bunch of different pitches. And, you know, in the end, you know, we, we people have joked about like you Darvish throwing seven or eight different kind of pitches. And that's hard for any pitcher to do. You know, mm -hmm. you kind of have to settle on a few. You, know, you can't just have an unlimited repertoire. But if you can be at least a little bit successful with several of them, you're going to keep the hitters guessing. And that is basically half the battle when it comes to pitching. So I think that's – maybe he's not looking for perfection with a with a sinker, with a two-seamer, but he's just looking for another way to um, disguise what he's doing. And he's got very good stuff to begin with and I think is just a little bit a, a little bit of a tweak here and there away from having a great season. Not only that, but 11 strikeouts per nine, less than two walks per nine – You've got some room to trade strikeouts for weak contact every now and then if it keeps the ball in the yard. Like if you could automatically slice off a strikeout per nine, so go down to 10 per nine instead of 11, but it cuts your home run rate to, let's say, like even just 1.2 like it was in 2022, I think you take that pretty easily all day because that home run rate – and again, that spiked during his – uh 
lower body issue that we kind of dance around because we don't want to get too specific. I think that, that there's definitely some good data or science or whatever behind this, because if he can take any sort of leap, he could very easily replace maybe not Sonny Gray's production last year, but what Sonny Gray gives the Cardinals this year, which I don't know how much that is a good comparison, but he could, he could really take a leap. I think is, is probably yeah. fair to say. I don't think there's any question that uh, the pitcher who on the, on the staff right now, I mean, sometimes it looks like maybe it's um, it's Bailey over the, the way he's, he's having a spring, but I really think Joe Ryan is still a guy who uh, has the most upside uh, as far as the guys who haven't had that a couple of breakthrough Pablo Lopez type seasons. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think he's, he's on the verge of that. And that's, uh, I, I think that's one of the things that ha- kind of has to happen for the twins too. He's, he's kind of a crucial member of that rotation, especially the way it's constructed right now without the twins having gone out and gotten a, a big established name. Uh, they're going to rely on Joe Ryan a lot to have the type of season for six months that he had for three last year. Yeah, for good reason. Let's give some love to Amazon Fire TV, and then when we come back, we'll wrap it up with uh, an email that you forwarded me that had you absolutely gobsmacked or jobsmacked. I don't know what the word is, but you were shocked, so we'll talk about it. So if you have not tried Amazon Fire TV yet, now is the time to do it. You can find all kinds of great stuff there. It's your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis, all that. And Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. And it provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. And whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which again, like we said, is coming up soon, the college basketball tournament, or Whatever you want to watch, you're going to want to have an access point to Fire TV. Now, Fire Channels is is something interesting that's kind of coming up. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And that includes us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels will let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more so you can stay up to date on the latest in the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, NBA. I'm I'm on a high from the Anthony Edwards block to win the game most recently here tonight. And so, yeah. Way to um, go, Dr. Green. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it takes me back to my high school days when, um, when he actually was written out of the series. So uh, if people don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. But anyway, uh, you can get great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, you name it. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and your Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should should do so. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Dave, how do you feel about split squad games? Um, Like watching them, I always feel like I'm being shortchanged. <laughs> yeah, well, so they had they had the sweatshirts with the the what do you call it the motto or whatever uh, whole squad ready maybe like seven eight years ago in spring training right. and I joked that they should say split squad ready when they had split squad games like uh, just a, a an alternate but I don't know I just I wondered if if like I guess it gets more playing time and all that good stuff so there's nothing wrong with them I just I don't know. Uh, well, they've got to, uh, you know, there aren't a, only half the league is in Florida and the other half's in Arizona. So yep. you, to, to get everybody enough work, I understand why you got to do it. You got to, you got to split the squad up. It says yep. so right in the name. So uh, it's, it's okay. But I, I'm like, oh, a split squad. That's great. Meh. Yeah. Uh, great news for Eric Swanson, who is, like I said before, married to a, a lovely gal from Minnesota. Their son, Toby, is on the comeback trail after being hit by a car. He's in, uh, sounds like he's going to be released from the hospital very soon in Florida. So obviously great news there. And the hope is that he can rejoin the Jays and be ready to go for the regular season. But again, great, great news to hear. And then I want to talk about Taylor Swift, which uh, usually would be a ratings ploy. 
But honestly, it's just an email that I received, which uh, let me see if I can find it here because I, I planned to print it out. Here we go. April 12th, you can get in your Saints era. 25 bucks for a reserve ticket gets you a friendship bracelet, a pregame concert with DJ Swifty, and an, uh, an opportunity to win two tickets to see Taylor Swift perform live in Miami. So uh, there's an asterisk at the bottom of this that says travel and lodging not included. And until I really paid attention to the idea that there was a Miami concert at stake here, I thought they were just being funny. Like, yeah, we're not going to give you travel and lodging to come to a St. Paul Saints game. Uh, that's the way my brain works. So um, anyway. Uh, well, it costs uh, about $12,000 to get into a Taylor Swift concert. So if they are somehow uh, putting the bill for a ticket or two tickets to the maybe even one ticket, uh, you know, you, you're going to have to find a way to get there yourself. I would say hitchhiking is the way. And I think Eddie Money said it best. I've got two tickets to Taylor Swift. Um, I don't think he said that. Rest in peace, Eddie Money. But, uh, Dave, you got an email or some kind of pitch or whatever that you sent to me, and you were incredulous. I kind of want to let you take the wheel and uh, just kind of fill us in here. So, you know, we get emails sometimes and uh, it's, it's from uh, um, multiple emails a day. I'll have, you know, a, a PR firm that was uh, promoting a, uh, a survey that they, that they had commissioned. Uh, let me get the name of the, they asked that we mention them. If you oh. know, sports handle uh, you see their work sometimes in the New York post and other reputable uh, sources. Um, basically they, the company went out and asked 2000 major league baseball fans if they, if they thought, if the fans thought that they had, if they had stuck with baseball, how, you know, could they have gotten to the major leagues? How far up the minor league ladder could they have gone? Could they steal a base against a major league team? Could they get a hit? And basically the answers uh, I mean, not it, it isn't like overwhelming that everybody thought so, but enough of these people, it's like there are a bunch of Uncle Ricos out there. I don't know how many people have seen um, Napoleon Dynamite, but there's a, there's a funny kind of caricature uh, character, Uncle Rico. We all know who like that, Uncle Rico. Yes. Who, uh, you know, sort of wistfully remembers when he was the backup high school cornerback. And if they'd only put him in, he would have had a great career. And <laughs> But one thing I did notice about this uh, is that the Twins fans seem to be the most level-headed, reasonable. So it's like, you know, 20% of the, the people think that they could hit uh, like 250 or something or 300 in the major leagues. When the answer is like almost none of these people that replied are getting anywhere near fouling a ball off, much less hitting, getting on base in the majors or stealing the bases. The Twins fans, though were very reasonable. Only 12% of the Twins fans polled thought that they could steal a base in the major leagues. And I thought that spoke well of uh, Twins fans who sometimes uh, will complain about uh, what Rocco did or uh, a strategy on his part or a tactic by uh, execution on the major league level. I was uh, proud of the Twins fans for not uh, being out of their mind uh, with hubris thinking that they could, you know, steal a base on Ryan Jeffers or someone like that. Yeah. I mean, maybe on Matthew Lecroy back in the day. Um, but well, yeah, yeah. I, I at spring training got like the up close view at Bradenton, the twins were taking like infield practice and it is astonishing the crispness and the quickness that the, a ball goes from in the gap, in the outfielder's glove, in the cutoff man's glove to the base. Yeah. It's like snap, 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 snap. There is absolutely no way a, a fan's head would not be spinning with how quickly that happens. And I know that we all, maybe not literally, but like most of us, a lot of us, baseball fans anyway, we played baseball when we were younger. And I think that's the, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, people played basketball and football too, and mm -hmm. maybe hockey in the, the place you're from. But yep. uh, I don't know, you know, why after watching something like that, you're describing in the major leagues, why people would get the idea that they could, compete but uh you know some some of the the details of this survey were so outrageous to me that i wondered if it was fake like is it did somebody Maybe. really you know 
or did you poll like 50 people? But they, I mean, 2000 people, I don't know that much about, I didn't like that class in college uh, statistics. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's a, a lot or what, but. No, it is. That's a, that's a pretty good representative sample. Yeah, it is. A, that's yeah. a good sampling. I, I, it seemed like it would be. Like on average, fans think they could hit 233 if given 100 major league at bats. Major not, leaguers can barely hit 233 anymore. Not all so projected to hit like 233 this year on fans. Yes. Like, so let's think about it. But you know, like, is is this thing real? Uh, it says that the all research conducted adheres to the MRS codes of conduct in the UK and the ICC. I don't know. This is a Danish company, uh, and RWB is registered with the Information Commissioner's Office. The Information Commissioner. So uh, I looked it up. There really is an information commissioner. It doesn't have anything to do with Rob Manfred, but Good. this this poll is legit. These people are just crazy. You know, Saris, I think it was in his fan graphs era, had something like where he and Christopher Hayes, who I think was on uh, CNN or I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Oh, much Chris, about. Uh, MSNBC. Political MSNBC. Report? Yep. And it was about like, if I played a full season at shortstop, how many plays would I make? And what's the over under? And I'm like, honestly, man, I don't think you'd make one. Like, that's how complex even basic plays as a shortstop are. I everybody go Google Gavin Lux playing shortstop yesterday and show and it, that will show you how difficult it is for someone who's coming off a, an injury to throw somebody out at first base on a ground ball. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything. I mean, you, you might make a play if you run into a ball and like force out at second base, but you're. You're you're totally out of your mind, Uncle Rico. I I legit think it's zero plays. Like 600 chances is zero outs recorded. Maybe. Yeah. Well, hey, we got to our end of our show as quickly as we usually do. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. For Dave Brown, this is Brandon Warren signing off saying thank you so much for checking us out on Locked on Twins. And we'll see you tomorrow night.